Thank you very much for the invitation to join you uh, during Open Access Week. And I should say, happy Open Access Week to you all. Uh, this week uh, is the theme of this Open Access Week is uh, climate for social justice. And so uh, my friend uh, Joran invited me to come and talk about a new project uh, that we're leading uh, with our, our partners here at Creative Commons. A moment ago, I was going to uh, do my welcome in German, but every time I put what I wanted to say into Google Translate, it changed. And I was very afraid that I was gonna say something inappropriate. So I decided to uh, not try that. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. We'll get the slides up. And I should say I will share these slides uh, with you immediately after so you can have access to them. Maybe if everybody can wave again, if you can see the slides. So those coming up on the screen, good, I can see them. Uh, my name is Cable Green. I'm the Director of Open Knowledge at Creative Commons. I've been here a long time. Uh, Creative Commons has been around for 20 years now. Uh, I've been here for just over 11 of those years. So it's a it's an honor to serve at Creative Commons and to work with uh, all of you as we work on open education, uh, open access research, open science, open data, uh, open culture, and other areas that we all uh, work on on a daily basis. Uh, I want to acknowledge that my uh, my uh, partner in the Open Climate Campaign, Dr. Monica Granados, uh, not only uh, helps to lead this project, but also helped to create these slides. So I want to give proper attribution and credit to my friend. So we start this story by asking, what are the world's greatest challenges? And at Creative Commons, when we think about the world's greatest challenges, we start with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with these goals. These are 17 uh, major world challenges that the world's national governments have agreed upon uh, and have agreed to work collaboratively uh, to solve them. They are, as it says, a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity for all people and the planet as we look forward and make plans into the future. The Sustainable Development Goals look like this. Uh, eliminating poverty, eliminating hunger, education for everybody, gender equality, life below water, climate action, clean water. These are challenges that have always existed, uh, but in the past uh, few decades have, uh, have really accelerated. Um, and uh, the other thing I want to say about this list is this list is very much interconnected. Uh, you can't uh, very well work on one of these problems without solving other problems that are directly related to it. For example, uh, it's difficult to solve for SDG4, an education uh, for everyone, if uh, people don't have enough food to eat or if they're living in poverty or if the educational systems are set up in a way uh, where gender equality has not been achieved uh, or the list goes on and on. And so these are uh, what we think of when we ask ourselves at Creative Commons, what are the biggest challenges in the world uh, that we need to help work on? So why are we talking about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals at OER Camp here in Germany? Well, I think for several reasons. One is that OER, of course, are openly licensed or uh, educational resources or educational resources that are already in the public domain. So OER can be used to teach people about the Sustainable Development Goals. Of course, uh, if you don't understand a problem, it's very difficult to solve it or to make changes to our behaviors uh, to do a better job with, say, clean water in our communities. Uh, SDGs are always changing. They're dynamic. And of course, because OER are openly licensed, they can be updated in real time. So they work quite well for sharing knowledge about the SDGs. Um, SDGs uh, are the big challenges of the day that the world's governments are focused on and working on solving. And to the extent that we are uh, tying educational resources to help learn, help people learn about the SDGs and solve the SDGs, that puts our public education systems in a very positive uh, relationship with our national governments. 
Um, I'm not as familiar with Germany, but I'm in the United States, and I can tell you that our national government and our state governments have systematically taken money away from public education for decades now. And one strategy is to tie education to solving big problems that the government is looking to solve, SDGs being among them. Other reasons. Well, learners can work on complex, authentic problems uh, while they're learning. Uh, my uh, my uh, doctorate and field of study is education psychology. And one of the things that we talk about uh, in this field is uh, putting learners in real environments that matter to them. Uh, and the SDGs affect all of us. And so uh, learning about biology or chemistry or math uh, in the context of a sustainable development goal uh, is very motivating uh, to students, and, uh, and that's exciting for them. Uh, learners want to make a difference in the world. Uh, we don't want to sit in a classroom and be talked at uh, and, uh, and spit that information back on exams. Uh, we want to contribute to solving problems. Uh, and when we do that, we're more motivated, we learn more deeply, et cetera. There have been some experiments <laughs> about uh, doing this. In fact, uh, making degree programs and fellowships and other programs for students to, <clears throat> to learn about the SDGs uh, and to make that the focus. And so there have been discussions about instead of getting a, say, a, maybe a degree in chemistry or biology, to get a degree in clean water and a minor in chemistry or biology. And so there have been some experiments around this space. I'm going to focus because here we are in open access week and the, the main theme is uh, social justice around climate. <clears throat> uh, so if we focus in on SDG number 13, which is about climate action, climate change, um, then we can really focus our efforts and discussion here for today. So we believe that, uh, and many around the world believe that climate change and the resulting harm to our global biodiversity is one of the most important SDGs on the list. And at Creative Commons for quite some time, we've been saying that if we want to combat climate change and work to solve it, that we need to open up the knowledge uh, about climate change. The problem is, is that uh, if you look at these statistics, currently, if you look at the climate research from 1980 until 2020, uh, over 57% of the climate change research articles are closed. They are behind a paywall. Uh, if you are not a wealthy university or individual, uh, odds are you don't have access to that research. And so think about that for a moment. Uh, we're, we have one of the most problematic uh, issues in human history, and the knowledge, much of which was funded with public funds, is not open to other researchers, is not open to the public, is not open to policymakers. And so that's a that's a significant problem that we need to address. And it looks something like this. Um, not only are many people not able to read the climate and uh, related research uh, about uh, how we might solve climate change, but uh, increasingly, uh, many scholars around the world are not even able to contribute their research because of high article processing charges to many of the commercial journals. And so it's a bit like having this brick wall uh, right down the middle of science that's stopping us from sharing. And that's frankly not how we are going to solve the world's biggest problems. So at Creative Commons, uh, I mentioned we're 20 years old. We're very proud of that. Uh, we have accomplished a lot in uh, in the global community in 20 years, uh, but we're less interested in the past. We're more interested in what should Creative Commons be focused on for the future. And so as we think about that and we decide what programs and what actions uh, we will focus our resources and time on, uh, this is one of the themes that we're talking about. And that is, if we're going to solve the world's biggest, most challenging, most complex problems, the knowledge about those problems must be open. Now, we realize that that's not the entire solution, but it is a necessary part of the solution. You cannot solve climate change if the knowledge about climate change is closed 
and unavailable to most of the world's people. You cannot solve clean water if most of the knowledge, the research, the educational resources, the data, the software, the hardware, if that knowledge is closed, we're not going to solve these problems. So again, focusing on climate change, what we did was we uh, uh, we built a coalition to tackle this problem, asking the question, what if we opened up the knowledge about climate change and biodiversity? What would that look like? What would a campaign like that mean for the world? So Creative Commons, Spark, and Eiffel, we are the three partners uh, around this coalition. Uh, we've also partnered with two funders, the Open Society Foundations, and the Arcadia Fund in the United Kingdom. Our campaign, which we uh, call the Open Climate Campaign, is a four-year campaign uh, specifically focused on opening up access <clears throat> to research and the research data to accelerate progress towards solving the climate crisis and preserving biodiversity. Now, I will say that while open access research is absolutely the focus and the main thing we're looking at, we are also looking at opening up other forms of knowledge, including open educational resources about climate and biodiversity. The campaign itself has 11 goals, and this is where we will spend our time and money over the next four years. The first is campaign messaging. This is a campaign. We want people to talk about it. We have a website. Uh, we have uh, all kinds of information, handouts, action kits, uh, social media about the campaign. We will be working very hard to get this message out that if we want to solve climate change and preserve biodiversity, the knowledge about them, the educational resources, the academic research must be open. The next is that we will do a landscape analysis, number two, on where are we with opening up access to research about climate science. Uh, we will do, uh, we're doing a landscape analysis. We're partnering with Koki out of Australia on this. And we will be looking at the canon of climate research to see exactly how much is open and how much is closed. Uh, and then down uh, under number 10, we will be looking at unbinding or opening some of that closed research. We'll focus on the most important, the most cited, kind of the key articles in this space that are closed and work to get those open. Number three, identify legal and policy barriers. So what is it at national government levels, at state and provincial levels, in our universities of the world that are stopping or discouraging climate change research from being open, and then to knock down those barriers? We will spend most of our time in items four, five, and six. We will be working with governments, with funders and with environmental organizations to build, adopt, and implement open access policies, specifically open access licensing policies, to ensure that the world's climate research and, uh, and biodiversity research is open by default. So we're starting with governments and funders because that's where the money comes from to fund the research. So if we can get the funder to say, if you want this money, you must open uh, your research and your research data, uh, we find that to be very effective. With environmental organizations, they have not only a lot of research, uh, it may not be published, but they have it in-house and educational resources um, that we would like to open up about uh, their work in climate change as well. Number seven, inclusion in international frameworks. There are an increasing number of international frameworks from IGOs around the world, including United Nations and its subsidiaries uh, that are about climate and that are about preserving biodiversity. And we analyze those frameworks and where there isn't a mention of open or open access or open policies, we work with those international frameworks and we uh, will seek to get open inserted into them. Number eight, secure endorsements for the campaign. So we will be uh, asking people to please endorse the campaign, help us advertise it, uh, take our materials and share them through your networks. We want as many people involved as possible. Uh, number nine, uh, collaborating with traditionally excluded voices in open knowledge. So to us, this is absolutely critical. Uh, we will have a committee 
that advises us, the campaign and our steering committee and our partners um, about uh, what are the campaign issues, I'm sorry, the cl open climate and biodiversity issues uh, locally in their countries all around the world. Uh, too often research has been dominated uh, and funded in the global north uh, and uh, and many under-resourced countries have not been able to uh, contribute and participate in contributing to climate science uh, and also uh, in many cases unable to access. Um, that is uh, not something we wanna see with this campaign. And we are, are going out of our way to ensure this is an inclusive and socially just campaign that includes people uh, from all countries, from all regions of the world. Um, I mentioned number 10 already. And then last, uh, we will be uh, discussing with publishers a special priority for climate and biodiversity research that it should be opened by default, even when there aren't uh, funding requirements in place. Uh, very similar to what was done uh, with COVID-19 research. Uh, with that, uh, let me invite all of you to join the Open Climate Campaign. I'll share the website here in just a moment with you. Um, check out the action kits. Uh, there are downloaded or uh, are downloadable action kits that you can take. Uh, you can also, if you scroll to the bottom of any of the Open Climate Campaign pages, you can sign up for our newsletter. Um, you can, if you know of uh, groups, since this is an OER conference, um, that have climate change educational resources, uh, please connect us with them. We're looking to open those up as well and share the OER about climate and biodiversity. And if you know of climate researchers um, that would like some help opening up their research, uh, we're more than happy to work with them as well. You can see we have a, a Twitter handle. We are at Open Climate Camp on Twitter. Uh, we have a website, openclimatecampaign.org. And you can also contact us at contact at openclimatecampaign.org.